Hello and welcome back. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Um, it's hard when you've got a, a young family. The kids are right outside the window here, actually. They've decided to move there. So you might get some ambient noise of the kids playing. Uh, and I've, I've been away uh, on a holiday and it's been hard to get back into it, actually, if I'm not being honest. And then I did do some uh, sort of practice with editing videos. So there's a few short videos under um, Who Wears Short Shorts. There's a reason for that title. So if you want to look at some of my experimenting with making a few short videos that are quite random, have a look at that. But this is getting back to my CD collection. And I had just recently gone through the blues. And so I wanted to come back and have a look at box sets in particular. So this is about box sets and why one might get a uh, box set. And I thought, how would I define those? I'm going to say anything that's maybe three discs or more, because how people um, think of box sets may vary, and there could be, say, two disc sets that are presented very nicely, uh, but I think of a box set as having a few more than that, and there is sort of different kinds of box sets. And I don't go out of my way to get them. I don't collect them, per se. Uh, I get them when I feel I need to and there's maybe I was thinking there's a few reasons maybe three or four reasons to get a box set so number one is that it may be a way of getting a lot of albums by a musician or a band uh, in one go so there can be these sort of sets where they put about five albums into a box or into a sleeve and so you can get in one hit um, a complete oeuvre of a musician and it may be of a particular period or it could be on a particular label uh, or if they haven't produced that much it could be the whole collection everything they've ever done and that could be one type of box set another type is um, the, and and this can sort of work in parallel or alongside these um, complete sets or partial sets of a musician's um, series of albums is the box set that could be a single album, but it's got a lot of rarities, B-sides, uh, previously unreleased. Uh, these ones you can feel sometimes a little cynical towards because it's it's reselling maybe an album, um, but with, say, maybe two or three other discs of all these things that weren't released back when the album was originally released. So, uh, And they can get packaged up quite nicely. And I think some people do track those down uh, on purpose. I don't. I, I see those come out and maybe the exception would be uh, Sufjan Stevens or Radiohead as a fan. I might get those sorts of box sets um, even though I already have the album because I want to be a completist. So there's those kinds of box sets for completists to get these sort of extras that, that come with them. Then there is um, just along those lines there's also the box set that are um, have a lot of accompanying material. So they're almost like uh, an artwork in and of themselves of how the box set was made. Uh, these ones are the ones that get into the, the, the very pricey category and limited edition. And, and that they'll have the um, elements of what I've just mentioned, which may be a complete set of someone's work, or it might be a particular album that's just gone to the nth degree. I'm thinking of maybe George... Harrison's um, All Things Must Pass, that, uh, that's a good example of a recent box set. There's different tiers of box sets for that album, but it's basically the album that's been um, remastered, but also the premier version of it that is limited comes in a massive crate with objects, uh, with a book, with all sorts of paraphernalia. And I mean, that's what can happen with some box sets. That you're seduced by the fact that it's not just the music, it's the book. It's the um, the objects, it's these unique pieces of art, photographs, whatever that may come with it. Uh, and then finally, there's just some um, musical genres where the box set is really the, the way to get the music. Uh, and it just happens to come in a box set. I mean, it could be in a single CD, best of. Uh, but an example would be the blues that I looked at previously. So I'll just show these quickly because I have run through them. But something like Lead Belly, that's a box set and it's a definitive collection that's three discs of everything that Lead Belly did. I'm led to believe. And then, of course, uh, I showed off um, Charlie Patton again. That's a three disc set. And so you could possibly get a best of that's just on a single disc, but this is another one definitive where it's everything that Charlie Patton did, and it happens to be in a box set format. Um, and that's why. I'm just pointing that out in this video, but I've already looked at these. Another good example, and this I pulled out because it has got some blues in it, 
but of course this one is the early uh, Fleetwood Mac um, described often as Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac but it, it uh, is three albums plus some extra albums uh, including a lot of blues jams and it is from the complete Blue Horizon uh, session so that's a particular sort of uh, collection of albums that Fleetwood Mac put out before they became a different kind of a band um, when after Peter Green left them. Along those lines I might just point out Sufjan Stevens because I did I did a whole video on Sufjan Stevens but that's another example of a box set um, where there's actually five discs in this and uh, I didn't show them off when I did that video but an example of um, you know, a little bit of paraphernalia is some stickers come in that set so that's you know kind of cute. Um, there's also, this is a poster that folds out, I'm not going to unfold it, and it's got sort of like a comic book thing going on. There's a booklet, a fairly thick booklet that comes in that, and then of course, and I'm just reaching over for the five different sort of Christmas album discs, and am I going from backwards to forwards? Yeah, so five, four, three, two, sorry about my fingers covering it, but you can look it up and one. And I think these did come out as separate albums on vinyl, but here they're being brought together as a box set um, on CD. And um, then that's another Sofian Stevens Christmas album. I'm not going to open this one up. Uh, I'm trying to get through this reasonably quickly because there's quite a few here to look at. I also looked at Radiohead and this is an example of a Radiohead box set. And of course it is um, yeah, it has got like two CDs, but also a DVD. Now, getting on to the new stuff, and this is things that I haven't shown off before. It is across different genres. That's more correct <laughs> to use, um, but always CD format. Uh, and I'll start with something that is similar to one of those blues albums I showed, uh, the Fleetwood Mac, and that's an Elvis box set that I got. So there's a three disc set here, but a really chunky booklet. Um, so the, the book itself is pretty substantial. It's quite, quite thick as you can see, full of photos. Now a friend of mine years ago said to me, oh you, you should have some Elvis in your collection. And I said, well you know I've heard Elvis, I know Elvis, but I only really knew Elvis uh, in the later years and his big hits. And he said, no, no, you should look into um, the early recordings. So Sun Records, you know, uh, and that's what this is. It's all his early stuff. So from 53 to 55, the complete recording. So this is another one of those. It's a particular period of time for Elvis that I opted to get. And um, I am going to try and unfold this and show it off a little bit. So the discs are sort of slid in. To this fold out and I didn't know looking at it that it was actually quite large the format of this um, because uh, you know there's a storage issue sometimes with box sets like where do you put them so that's why these are all in sort of unique places different places um, as opposed to my regular CD collection and um, I actually got a second copy of this so the first copy when it arrived the box, everything was quite nice. It was actually in pretty good. There was a little bit of a munch on the corner, but one of the discs had actually slid so far in, it must have been dropped, that it, it ripped its way into here and I could not get it out for the life of me. So that's a problem with some sort of unique formatting. Um, things can not travel well. And I had to contact them and I returned it and then they sent me this one, which came through fine, relatively fine. I was gonna, it's got a little bit of creasing here from um, maybe having been squashed. Um, it's very hard when you're getting stuff sent to you to really know how good a condition it will get to you. I suppose with a box set, um, because they tend to cost more, uh, this wasn't too much, it was 60 bucks for three discs. To me, that's pretty good. And actually, they refunded me the money, so I ended up getting this for free in the end. So they took back the um, damaged one, and this one I wasn't going to complain because the damage is very minimal. Now, looking around, I think I'll just jump into this one, which may offend some people because it does have um, breasts on the cover, Niagara. Um, so that's just, you know, front and back. And this is uh, from Europe, where they're not so hung up on that sort of thing. Um, and obviously, 
Niagara is a jazz album, but it's really percussion driven. So it kind of gives you those, the, the sweaty breasts on the cover sort of indicate that samba. I would say it's got a Latin, but it does have sort of uh, African rhythms to it. And it's three discs because it's all of their albums in one set. So that's a cover from one of the albums that is a double sort of gatefold cover from one album and then that's a third album. So it's really good. It's really interesting. It's really different. Um, and when I heard it, I thought, oh, yes, I've got to get that. Um, this is a special sort of um, set that's quite expensive now. Um, the vinyl actually isn't as expensive, but um, this sort of brings them all together. You should know about Django Reinhardt. So I've got a couple. I'll show you a couple of things. Um, this is a three disc set. Uh, it's fairly recent. It's quite a nice um, sort of catalogue of his work over a number of years. Uh, he was very prolific um, and he worked with uh, Stefan Grappelli. Grappelli. Uh, I'm not sure entirely how to pronounce that. I'll, maybe I'll flash the name up and you can figure out Stefan Grappelli uh, on violin. And so the two of them did a lot together, but he also um, worked with other musicians. So there is sort of band material here as well. But then I um, looked online, and actually this box set was recommended, and this is a five disc set. Uh, and I found this very cheap second hand, so I thought, well, I really should get it. Um, so, you know, the, the box itself is a bit rough. It's just normal size CDs, but there's five of them. And it's very comprehensive. Uh, it still won't cover every last thing. And what is fortunate about this is it doesn't have a great deal of crossover with the other uh, Django Reinhardt collection that I've got. So there's a few songs that are on both, but in fact, that one's quite different to this one. I think this goes a little further back than the other one. Um, it's on JSP Records is, um, who put this out. I do have Stan Getz, uh, The Bossa Nova Years. Now this is actually put out by Verve. You want things that have come off a master tape. And this is a five disc set. And so it's all of the um, kind of early Getz, Gilberto sort of jazz albums. I won't show all of them, but you can look it up. But it's from the authentic Verve label. A uh, couple of things to point out is that um, because these are just, this is one of those sort of compilations, this is kind of a period in Stan Getz's career where he did a whole lot of Latin jazz and they are considered really good albums. And if you bought them one at a time, it would cost you a lot more than this. And of course, they're just sort of basic sleeves for each album. So you're not getting all the information that you would get in standalone albums. So that could be important to you if you like reading liner notes. These don't come with liner notes. Um, they do have the individual, I should point out, they do have the individual cover art and they do have descriptions of the tracks at the back and there are actually extra tracks. And if we're just gonna stick with Stan Getz, this one, um, this is just considered one of his most exceptional kind of uh, albums. It's a three disc set. Again, these are just sort of, I think they're standard. Well, they're slightly thin, um, but they're jewel case, but they're slightly thinner than a standard jewel case. So it's a slightly thinner box than it would be if they were full size jewel case. And it's actually, you know, the complete Roost recording. So again, this is when he was on uh, something called the Roost label before he moved to other labels, Verve, obviously, for those Bossa Nova years. Uh, and he may have been on other labels, but all his Roost recordings, which are considered exceptional, like this is amazing. If you can get your hands on this, I just listened to it and knew I had to have it. So I bought this on Discogs. Uh, so do try and hunt it down. I think it might be getting a bit pricey now. I guess I'm running through some jazz, so I'll just keep going. Um, I was watching, you know, when I'm doing this, I look at other people's videos um, where they're talking about CDs or music collections. I don't rule out looking at people talking about their vinyl collections. But this was something that someone said was their favorite jazz album. And it wasn't something I had actually heard or heard of. Uh, it's European jazz musicians. Um, there are some standards in there. Uh, jazz at the Pawn Shop, it's called. This is the 30th anniversary edition. So it's actually got three Super Audio CDs. I don't have a Super Audio CD player, and it is one of the greatest live recordings, according to some people, arguably, uh, in jazz. And I think this is quite expensive now. I don't think it's really that easy to get your hands on. I felt very lucky to get it. But 
I don't know, have a look. I mean, things change. Sometimes people just, you know, they put these things up. They don't want them anymore. Someone obviously never even opened this. Maybe it was a gift. And um, I was lucky enough to get it at a really reasonable price. Bill Evans, um, another sort of box set or collection. Um, these are his recordings, um, the Village Vanguard recordings. So he did live at the Village Vanguard and then there's also Waltz for Debbie. Now you could get both of those albums uh, standalone, but this is the complete recording. So it's got all the stuff that's on Waltz for Debbie and it's got everything that's on Live at the Village Vanguard and then it's got everything else that wasn't put on both of those albums. Or each of those albums so um, I just I love those two albums so much I've gone sort of deep on Bill Evans and I wanted to just have everything so this is one of these you know I'm being a completist here um, so there's three discs they really sort of bottled lightning in this um, this series of recordings at the Village Vanguard and um, yeah, that it, it was never going to get repeated. Um, so that's why it kind of goes down and sort of jazz um, folklore is just one of the great recordings. And it, it really is. It lives up to it. So there you go. Moving right along, because I have no idea how long this is taking. Um, Cesaria Evora. So um, she. this is sort of world music. It does um, verge on jazz. Um, it's Cabo Verde uh, music, which is quite unique. So it's kind of a nexus of um, Portuguese and um, African. Cabo Verde is an island. Uh, look it up. Look her up for sure. Cesaria Evora. Um, and I got this, which is three albums. This is an example of just three albums put together in one set. Another good example of getting a lot of albums in one go is Hank Mobley. Um, now I already had, let me think, uh, Soul Station. So I've got Soul Station as a standalone album. Uh, it's a Rudy Van Gelder edition. I like it. I'm not going to get into that argument um, whether it's better on, oh God, you get vinyl people saying it's better on vinyl. But, um, you know, that's one of, if you only get one Hank Mobley album, that might be it, right? Soul Station is amazing. But there's also Roll Call and Peck in Time that is often talked about. And so I thought, well, I wouldn't mind getting those, but then this was much cheaper to just get both those albums and then three more for the same price as buying um, maybe even one, or only a little bit more than just buying Roll Call, for instance, which is actually quite expensive. Some of these jazz albums, even on CD, um, because they're not really producing them now, and when they did sort of released them remastered a few years ago in the in the sort of mid 2000s they're not releasing them again so you know you can pay quite a lot to get your own version of pick and time or roll call and then they can be released in japan or through japan and that just costs a fortune so this i discovered and i got no room for squares roll call pick and time another workout and reach out it's another really good way to sort of um get, you know build a jazz collection relatively cheaply um, and there's, you know, you can tell that there'll always be some real standout albums and then not so good albums on some of them. This one actually I think is quite solid. So these uh, five original albums in this set are actually all very solid. And now we're going to jump to something quite different. And that's Mozart. This was something that is on like one of the top 100 um, sort of classical albums. And it's actually a box set with 10 CDs. 10 CDs. I don't know that much about classical music other than you have particular conductors, you have um, particular sort of uh, either this is a chamber orchestra or um, uh, philharmonic orchestras and, and, and groups that are considered exceptional. Uh, same with sort of standout violinists and what have you and cellists. And, so, you know, there's, there's this sort of combination of when you get the right conductor. This guy, um, Daniel Berenboim, is a, I think he's a conductor, but I also think he plays piano. So I think he's pianist, and I'm just having a look. Yes, piano and conductor. How's the ego on this guy? He's on every single one of these. They all look like this. <laughs> but it is amazing. It is beautiful, beautiful classical music. Uh, I got this box set of Gas. And Gas is ambient um, German electronica ambient music. Now I knew I was going to forget his name and I'll probably just flash it up on screen so you get his name. 
but this is he's an artist as well so the um the, the sort of the cover art of the albums are all him and his photography but he also does painting now these are very sought after um, I got the box set because the individual albums, even on CD, are just prohibitively expensive. And I'm just trying to find um, what the name... Well, one of them is Pop. Um, and they don't give me anything on here. And uh, this is always risky doing things in one take. And I'm just going to do it. But I'll pop up. There's four discs here. And so it's kind of like uh, a bunch of um, discs that he did um, fairly early on. And the discs individually, especially on vinyl, is super expensive. So fortunately, I discovered there is this box set that he put out of four of his early albums that I managed to get all in one go. Now, it is very deeply ambient. Um, some of it gets a bit spooky. Pop is actually, as it suggests, quite, quite a lot lighter than the other. Um, I really love ambient music. We're going we're gonna to get into... Um, it's called This one's called Na und Fern. Um, and we're going to get into ambient electronica soon enough. But I just, you know, if you're into ambient electronica as I am, gas is somebody that you need to have in your collection. And of course, I just got a got it in one hit in this box set. So I felt very fortunate. And this itself was a little on the pricey side. But um, uh, in comparison to actually trying to get those individual albums, uh, far cheaper. Now, this is interesting. Convocation, Sufjan Stevens. This is a five-disc set. I'm just trying to find... Yep. Um, now, he released this online during lockdowns and um, COVID. Uh, it came out, I think it was 2021. Yeah. Um, and I bought it on vinyl because it didn't look like there was going to be a CD release. So I pre-bought it on vinyl because I just... You know, I am a Sufjan completist, so I will own up to that. And then, then I saw it came out on CD, so I had to get it um, because I prefer to listen to things on CD. So it is uh, ambient music as well. Here's an interesting one. Um, Massive Attack. And I'm going to have to open this so I can see there's a poster that unfolds. I'm not going to unfold it. Um, but there's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, which is a random number to have, eleven CDs. But these are all uh, Massive Attack's singles um off all of their um very popular that's a right slide opening over there um popular albums so that's uh what is it blue lines no protection mezzanine and that's the three i can remember off the top of my head and that might be all they are but that's all the singles from those albums plus um live versions b-sides um different remixes so you get something so cd1 you get daydreaming album version then you get daydreaming love it mix daydreaming brixton mass oh, sorry brixton bass mix daydreaming love it dub and then a track called any love which sounds like a b-side but the remixes the remixes on the selection all the remixes on here are incredible now this one has a unique box where it is um I'm not sure what it's called, but it's when you touch something, it's sort of heat sensitive um, and you can see, then you can actually see it. So quite quite a cool um, box and I've had this for a long time, but yeah, it's a, it's actually quite a expensive set to get now. And I can see why, because it's not just a cynical compilation of their singles. It's great to have all those um, wonderful singles and to have the, the standard release version but the remixes on this is just um, fantastic. So, well, we're trying to find. Uh, just the last time I looked, it's actually not that cheap to get. Okay, I'm nearly there. Just two more box sets. Now, uh, here's something I got back in the day. Um, Loop Guru. So, this is a four-disc set. Now, I'll show them one by one. And you may get a sense of what is Loop Guru. What, what could Loop Guru be? And I think that the covers might give you a sense of what it is. Um, it's sort of uh, World Electronica, um, heavily sort of influenced by India and the Middle East. It's bordering on, on Goa trance, so you can almost picture the, um, the blonde dreadlocks and the fire poise. So yeah, I, I think, listen to it, have a listen, you may really like it. Um, 
there's nothing wrong with Luke Guru. I'd never get rid of it. Sometimes I put it on. I go, it takes me back to uh, the raves that I used to go to in my youth. So it has kind of got that vibe. Finally, going to end strong here. Um, this, I would say, is one of these must-have albums. And it is The Magnetic Fields, uh, 69 Love Songs. Um, so this is a three-disc set. And if you don't know the magnetic fields, do check them out. Uh, but this is an amazing album. Stephen Merritt, that's his name, Stephen Merritt. So yeah, he's got quite a unique voice. Uh, and the songs are quite quirky uh, and cute and unusual. But the arrangements, the earnestness, uh, it is quite beautiful. 69 love songs. 69 it's got on the cover but that's what its full title is uh, volume one two and three 69 love songs must have been a hell of a breakup so that's it for me um this may have been a long one i don't know next is going to be composers and classical music so i may do that in one hit and then we're on to a very exciting genre for me electronica and predominantly ambient electronica not too much dance music um some idm so thanks for watching. Um, please do subscribe and share this and what have you. Um, I know there's a community of people that are into music, into physical format, heavily weighted towards vinyl. But pop my videos under people's noses to say, hey, look, here's somebody who's into audiophile music, audio playing on a decent stereo system, CDs, no to streaming, and a CD collection is a much easier thing to put together than vinyl. Trust me. Okay, take care. See you soon. Bye.